Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a CDC emerger. Now, before we get into it, I'd just like to tell you all that I'm going to take a short break over the summer to recuperate, do a bit of decorating, go on a family holiday, but I'll be back in September with more fly fishing content. So that said, without further ado, Let's get into it. The hook in the vice then is a Hanak H300 barbless hook. This one's at size 12 and it's on a medium wire. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Simplify. It's classic wax thread at AO. As you can see, it's a, a green colour. What do they call this? Medium olive uh, green. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is get some wax onto my thread. And I want to catch just in behind the eye and get a bed of thread approximately half a centimetre just to get my thread onto the hook shank then I'm going to remove my rat's tail the next thing I'm going to do is add my wing first of all now what I'm using is because uh, I'm going to be lazy is some ultra selected CDC feathers this is from Troutline as you can see, it comes in a little packet and it's already pre-stacked for you. Now, the number of feathers that I'm going to use here is between sort of five and six. I find that for the still waters, you do need quite a few CDC plumes. So I've got my six plumes of CDC and what I want to do is bring my thread up approximately two millimeters from the eye of the hook and I want to push the CDC past the eye approximately two centimeters and then I'm going to get a couple of turns to hold it into place just going to manipulate that so it's sitting on top of the shank and then once I'm happy it's sitting in the right place I can get two or three turns as tight as I dare to go remember we're just using eight thread here and not nano silk so you can't afford really to put excess pressure on your thread it will just snap now this uh, excess CDC, I don't want to cut it off square. I want to have it at an angle. And I'm going to just angle my snips to take that away. Now the reason I do it like this is so that I can get a nice tapered body. So I'm not going to get touching turns, but I'm going to try and keep it as neat as possible because the, bo uh, the thread here is going to help form the body of the fly. So I'm going to go down, make sure you trap in all them little bits of CDC. It has got a, a tendency to um, fluff out and get everywhere. Now, points to note, you'll see that I've got that nice slim taper and the AOT thread really helps with that. It keeps the fly nice and slim. Now at this point, I am going to adjust the hook in my vise. Now the reason for that is the next part of the fly, a lot of it's going to go on down the bottom here. So I'm going to grab some uh, mirror tinsel. This is 0.8 millimeters. As you can see, it's red and I've taken a little piece off already, which I'm going to catch in. He says, it's misbehaving there, at the butt of the fly. Now just get a couple of turns to hold that into place and then come up maybe three or four millimetres. Now with this, I want to get the first turn onto the shank of the hook and I'm going to pull quite tight on it and then I'm going to come up in overlapping turns with the red just to meet my thread and once I've met the thread I can bring that over and just two or three turns to hold it into place and I'll just catch a couple of turns in front then I can come in with my snips and remove my excess material the next thing I want to do is add in my rib and what I'm using is some pre-stripped peacock heralds again I'm being a little idle and I've got some of the trout lines pre-stripped peacock heralds and, and I've picked out 
uh, one of the fibers as you can see at one end it's really really thin and uh, I need the length that's why I'm using this very thin bit here now I'm going to catch that in on my side he says like so now this time I'm going to come back all the way to where I want my butt to start so my red butt I didn't want all that that you've seen and that looks about right and this time I'm really going to take care to keep that nice and tidy at the bottom using the coloured thread tying thread to form the body now once I've done that again I'm just going to adjust my hook slightly in the bench which is easy to do with this vise uh, and then I can work on the rest of the body now I want to maintain that taper try and keep it as slim as possible I mean you, when you're tying these flies in smaller sizes I definitely would move to nano silk and uh, obviously the, the, the green thread's quite important but you just get yourself some white nano silk and a green felt tip and you've got some green tying thread it's fairly straightforward now at this end I'm going to get several turns in because I am going to use the rotary function on my vise to bring up my strip peacock curl. Now it's a dangerous part of this. You can see I've already got a very thin part of the stripped curl connected to the fly. So I don't want to catch the hook point or anything else for that matter at this juncture. Because then you've got to undo all your thread, come back and tie in another herald. And I know this because I've done it several times. And I'm sure you have as well. But I'm just bringing that up now, nice and slow, trying to keep my, my spacing pretty even. As it gets up to the thicker part of the, the herald, you can see there, it becomes a little easier. Your nerves become a little less frayed as you get near the end. Now, as I'm turning, the thread's just undoing. So them extra turns I put in at the, uh, the top of the fly there are slowly disappearing. And now I'm at the head, I can bring my thread over to catch the peacock herald, like so. A couple of turns and the hair was quite delicate, so that will just pull away once you've secured it into place. Now, what I've been doing, I've tied up a few of these from my own boxes, and I've just been coating the, the body with super glue, and then just doing something else while I wait for it to dry. It only takes a few minutes, but because we're uh, I'm time conscious, I don't want to waste your time, I'm going to use some UV resin. Now, you get literally the same effect, but... Uh, I don't know why, the super glue was handy, I couldn't find my resin, I ended up just uh, using super glue. And once I've started doing it that way, I tend to just stick to a set of five flies, only tying fives um, anymore for me, I get bored, I end up going off piste and tying some rubbish. So uh, when I'm tying from my own boxes, I tend to just stick to five at a time and then maybe try something else or um, just stop tying all together actually. So I'll just bring in my torch to cure off that UV resin. Um, I'm sorry the label's mission missing from this but it is Solaris Bone Dry, the UV resin. It's what uh, uh, my preferred poison if you like when it comes to UV resins. Uh, I don't believe they're all created equal. Uh, in my humble opinion, the Solaris is, is the best. Uh, it seems to cure pretty quickly and it doesn't discolour after a while. So, I'm happy that's cured. Next thing I'm going to do is add in my thorax material. And what I've got is from Nature Spirit. This is Emergence Dubbing and it's number 79 Peacock Green. So, I failed to get some out of the packet before I started, apologies. So I've got a little bit out now, as you can see it's quite a, an interesting sort of dub. I'll just get that bit away. And I'm going to 
just put that onto my thread. Now I think between between two and three inches of dubbing tends to do the job. You can always take some off or add some. It's not a showstopper if you've misjudged it. And then I'm going to come in and I want about an eighth of an inch. And I think I have misjudged it here. So I'm going to just remove some of that. Now, there's a little bit left on the thread and the reason for that is I want to cock up my CDC, bring that to the front and that little bit of dubbing will help just cock the fly so that when I'm fishing with it, it sits, uh, I'll show you once I've finished the fly, but it sits just right in the water for me anyway. So to finish off, I'll come in with a little bit of super glue onto my thread. Like so, and that's probably a bit more than I wanted. Just touch that off with my fingers. And then I can whip finish. Three turn whip finish will suffice. And that bit of glue means you won't have to come in afterwards and try and finish your fly with that CDC looming over the eye and you don't want to get super glue in your CDC. It will not float, folks, it will not float. Okay, so I've got the fly nearly finished. I'm going to scruff out my thorax. Doesn't, doesn't need much. Uh, any extra that you've got there, you can pull away in your fingers. And there you have it. And uh, the reason I'm tying this actually is a friend of mine was telling me about how a guy was fishing up at the Lake of Men Teeth and he was using yellow owls and it was a and when he explained it to me, it was a pretty standard setup. So two culls, sort of three foot apart, and in the middle he was fishing a small buzzer pattern. And the idea of that was to get the tippet material off the surface of the water. It's something I've seen employed several times. Um, buzzers can be a little heavy. I, I like to use a hare's ear or a snatcher pattern like I tied last week. So there we go. Uh, it's a, an olive suspender. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you folks have a fantastic summer and I'll see you all back in September. Thanks for watching.